about next question that I really liked was Celine. Celine, 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 Celine. Celine, um, under this tutelage of Hedy Slimane, um, from you might be familiar with that name because he was the former creative director at Saint Laurent before he um, announced his exit. Took a bit of a break and then he was announced that he was going to take over from Phoebe Filo at Celine. He was going to launch the first Mendoza collection and in general just revamp the house and make sure they make money because as great as a designer Phoebe Filo was, um, she never really in she never really um. She was. It didn't seem that like she was willing to kind of, you know, um, venture into the e-commerce world. And um, they did. They never really got into selling any pieces online for the most part. I think maybe towards the last three or four seasons, they started to offer a, a few of their collections available online, or you could at least look at the looks and kind of see how much stuff was and call for availability and things. But you couldn't exactly shop directly online, which was always a bit um, uh, disappointing because some of Philip or all of Philip Fowler's collections were very sought after. Uh, people wanted to get their hands on it but not everyone had um, the access or the ability to go to stores at Stock Celine or to go to their own uh, boutiques so now um, Harrison Men's been kind of um, tasked with the role of making sure he's able to bring Celine into the modern world or bring it into the 21st century by having an online store having a mental collection and for the most part everyone was quite excited um, then the first collection came around and everyone kind of got bummed out because I think people had the wrong impression that somehow um, Hedy Simone was suddenly going to change what he does and um, was going to suddenly um, interpret or carry on the codes, the aesthetic that Phoebe Fire left behind with his collection. Never going to happen. Whenever they it, whenever they hire a new designer for these houses, they all going to go through the same sort of um, process, right? They hire a new creative director. The creative director um, deletes all the social media that's, that might exist for the company. They change the logo. Um, they they have new photographers for their campaigns. They have new models that they have for their campaigns. They completely change it and kind of you know use the opportunity to kind of um, to kind of display their own um, creativity to kind of give their own vision of what that house looks like, as opposed to carrying on the traditions of the previous designer. If anything, what they might do is carry on the codes left behind the original founder of the company. But they're not necessarily going to take on what the person before them done because again, what what is the point? If you get hired for that kind of role, even if it's for a short period of time, even if you get kicked out after a year, you want to at least leave behind your own legacy and not have a legacy that kind of looks like well, I have someone else already done. So, um, Hedy Simone's always going to Hedy Simone. Um, people just need to understand that. And for me personally, even though the first collection was maybe a bit disappointing, I kind of gave him a bit of room to kind of grow. The first collection, you kind of have to hit a bit of a softball, and then your second collection kind of ramps it up a little bit, little by little. And for me personally I, I i was a fan of it i liked a lot of the looks i thought he um did a very interesting play on i don't know this 70s 80s teddy boy carnaby street war on wandering dude he's probably still infatuated with a guy that probably doesn't exist i don't think for the most part i might you might see a couple of these people hanging around carnaby street walking around with their um winkle um winkleman chelsea boot things whatever they're called from underground um but that guy doesn't really exist that much anymore. I don't see them around. I'm not sure if other people do. But um, I just had this moment seems to be infatuated by this vision of this indie dude. Um, and for that guy that is out there that likes that kind of look, who isn't a band, who does art, who's a photographer, whoever it might be, a hairdresser, you're going to fucking love everything that's in here. And I think there is a bit, there must be a bit of vanity that's included in the idea of owning a suit that looks like this, right? A double-breasted suit that has a Celine tag on the inside. There's something really sexy about it. I'm not sure what it is. So I think just for that main part, people are going to get it overall. Um, the reintroduction of a skinny tie, again, harkens back to the early 2000s um, era of indie when people were wearing uh, skinny ties with white shirts tucked in, which kind of goes back to Teddy Samen's Dior Home kind of days when that was sort of like the um, uniform of choice for the killers and the strokes and those kind of guys coming up. Um, but overall, I liked a lot of the collection, man. Loads of nice overcoats, loads of really interesting plays of proportion, crop trousers, not as high waisted as stuff we might have seen from uh, Martin Rose in the previous slides that I showed you. Um, but again, loads of nice little little hints of tailoring that he's kind of imbued in this collection. Loads of nice color palettes. Um, not as much color as you'd hope, but you know, it's a man. He's not going to really whack you over the head with loads of color prints. Um, great little jackets like this motor jacket is going to be supremely popular. You can see in the store that knit is going to be popular. The trousers are going to be really popular. Shoes are going to be popular, I'm sure. 
overall great jackets herringbone this 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 outfit is insanely great right you've kind of got this kind of priestly church collar which looks similar to there's a guy on punishing now at the moment he's sort of like the preacher dude and he looks similar to this kind of look overall the chelsea boots just look how great they look like fuck off like look how nice they look they look amazingly great um just a, a really really nice collection i think overall another nice jacket cheetah print coat and again a nice leather jacket with um it looks like it's not yet oh, just contrast stitching on this on the ribbing looks so great the chelsea boots i haven't seen up close and personal but again he invented a white boot for saint laurent that's you know still selling through now at the moment so if you can if you can somehow bring in uh a cowboy boot-esque thing into celine that kind of sells through he's he's already won right without even doing him that much and then when you add in all this all the handbags that are going to be just the next collection that's going to be a win again um you're kind of seeing a little bit of the the coat that was existed for saint laurent included in in blue in this celine collection i think it was a teddy jacket right um from saint laurent that's kind of come kind of come back uh with uh, Celine here for Hedy. You got these sort of like creeper brogues that are. Who is the guy that used to go with Kate Moss? He loves these. Um, the former founder, I think, of Wonderland magazine. He loved those kind of shoes. I'm sure he's gonna be very a fan of them. Um, again, nice overcoats. This look looks incredible. All leather. Maybe right in right on trend of what's happening at the moment with the whole '90s Matrix sort of feel. Um, this jacket just looks incredible. The outfit looks really fucking good. I think that would look great on most people that want to wear it. It's a great menswear look. Again, stuff that you're easily going to see. You're easily going to see someone like a Zara taking this and just kind of like, you know, breaking it down and introducing it into a collection. And that, I think, is a real mark of success. I think for all the slack you might get from fashion critics or for people in the industry, I think Hedy Semen is really talented at interpreting what the masses want. I think in the beginning it was quite, you know, um, it maybe was quite cutting edge. It really did make it, you really did put his flag in a pole of what he thought masculinity was but i think now as kind of you know the you know the world's kind of catch up and everyone is sort of wearing this whole skinny look everywhere and whatever that look is is kind of the common look that you kind of see around the streets of london especially if you're going to the city center but i think he's still being able to kind of dictate what the modern man wants in their wardrobe right you want to look fashiony without looking too fashiony and this is exactly right in line with it like something like this with this kind of um quintessential army surplus jacket with some quilted on the inside a nice suit there nice skinny tie scarf white shoes and some loafers you're set do you know what i mean like you're all, all, you're set 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 all the looks here look great. I think you can. Most men on the high street would want to wear this sort of look, right? Whether or not he's aiming for that guy or not is something else. But I think this is way, way above what anyone that guy that took over from um, Harry Semen at Saint Laurent. I think Anthony Vaccarelli, and um, the stuff he's doing there is not as great as this at all. He's been able to kind of, you know, Vaccarelli's kind of like tried to copy that Saint Laurent mode, and it hasn't really worked out that well. But this is far and above anything you might see at Saint Laurent at the moment. This is really fucking good. And like I said, there is some there is some sort of vanity attached to the idea of having a, a navy trench coat, right? A navy overcoat um, made by Hadi Semaine under the under the Celine um, house. Like there's something about having that tag on the inside of your jacket that's going to look fucking insane. Um, I love I love every single bit of this look. Some of the leather jackets for me are really impressed. I love the leather trousers. I'm sure they're going to be really popular when they come online. Um, the leather jackets look really cool nice little details on the trousers again that i'm a big fan of and again the skinny tie i'm not sure if that's going to come back in i wouldn't mind wearing a skinny tie again personally i'm not against it but whether or not the modern man is going to be um open or welcoming to kind of wearing that kind of thing is something that's going to be left for interpretation let's see if that happens but i'll be interested to see if that happens if that kind of makes us come back again you start seeing guys walking around um wearing suits i'm not i'm not opposed to it personally i think it looks fucking awesome and again, it's just a, a kind of a different silhouette than what we're seeing from most designers on Paris Fashion Week. It's mostly big, boxy looks with that all kind of tailored, that all kind of crop, that all kind of cut. But this is more in the in the mold of like really skinny dudes, mostly white, which people have a problem with. But again, don't really care. But I love it. I fucking love it. I think it looks amazing personally. These boots just look great. This whole outfit with a jacket in front and the suit and the scarf on the inside looks amazing. Yeah, so that was one of my favorites personally. I really like the Celine collection. Um, this second round, or you know, second round, second time around, this jacket was fucking awesome by Hedy Semaine, and I recommend you check that out.